Hello everyone, my name is George Miller and I'm going to be campaigning my information processing theory with you today. Before we get started, I would like to give you a little bit of background information on myself. I received a bachelor's and master's degree in speech from the University of Alabama. I then went on to get a master's and doctorate in psychology from Harvard. I later became a professor at Harvard, then MIT, later Rockefeller, and finally at Princeton. I was one of the major founders of cognitive psychology and cognitive neuroscience. My research and findings, along with my colleagues, dominated the field in the 1950s. I was awarded the National Medal of Science for my work in understanding the human mind. Perhaps my most popular study was that of the human memory. I wrote a paper called The Magic Number 7, Plus or Minus 2, Some Limits on Our Capacity for Processing Information. In this paper, I discuss the mind's short-term memory, and this paper is still one of the most referred to papers in psychology today. Along with my colleagues, I came up with the TOTE theory, test, operate, test, and exit. This theory helped psychologists to see how humans plan and carry out their goals. The basic idea of my information processing theory is very simple. It's that the human mind operates a lot like a computer or an information processor. Our brain receives input, processes that input, and then delivers an output. The information that's received must be stored and processed. My work proposed that there are three different stages of memory, sensory memory, working memory, and long-term memory. During the sensory memory stage, information is gathered through our senses. These unconscious memories may typically last a very short time, only about three seconds. Sensory memory is what grabs our attention. If we find the information unnecessary or uninteresting, chances are we won't remember it. The sensory memory causes our brains to focus up and transfer interesting information into our working memory. Working memory relates to what we are thinking about at any given time. This stage memory is affected by the amount of mental effort being put into something. Working memory was my most famous line of work. I propose that working memory can only hold seven plus or minus two units or chunks of information at one time. The span of holding these chunks of information is only about 15 seconds. Two different options help aid with this and it's chunking and repetition. The last stage of memory is the long-term memory and unlike working memory and short-term memory, long-term memory is permanent and has unlimited amounts of space. Long-term memory is extremely well organized and it's very easy for us to pull information from our long-term memory because the retrieval process is very simple. Some of the things we store in our long-term memory are how to do things like brush our teeth and mental images of things we imagine. The information processing theory relates very well to the elementary classroom. If you keep it in mind in the classroom, students will retain the information they're given if it's put to use. Um, I've have a few techniques that are useful to teachers in the elementary classroom. One is to get your students attention. Have an attention grabber at the beginning of a lesson that will make your students interested. This will fire up that sensory memory and really get their brains blowing. It will encourage them to transfer this new information into their working memory and eventually into their long-term memory. Another tip is to show students how to chunk information together and chunk information together yourself. As mentioned earlier, chunking can help students transfer more information into their long-term memory. This is a kind of a way to trick our brains. Instead of teaching seven very small units of information, teach seven chunks of larger information. And lastly, use repetition. Students need to hear information again after it's been forgotten. Like we discussed earlier, students can typically hold information in their working memories for about 15 seconds. Once that information's been forgotten, teachers need to reiterate and repeat themselves so that students will hear it again and be more likely to transfer that information into their long-term memory. Now here are the pros and cons of my information processing theory. Let's start with the pros. My theory shows the importance of not overloading a student's mind. It reminds teachers and others that there is only so much information a student can process at once. My theory also works well for English language learners and for lower level learners since repetition and chunking are especially benefit to those students as well as all other students. My theory also works well in honors level courses or with gifted students. 
because students in these courses can typically keep track of their own progress without an adult. Students can communicate with the teacher and let them know how many chunks of information they can withstand. Now let's talk about the cons. While my theory has seven plus or minus two units of information, the findings and research have been updated since my death in 2012, and they found that the new number is five units plus or minus two. My theory is also great in a sense, but it's difficult for teachers to keep track of because there's a lot of assessment involved and it can't always be done. Every child and student is different and my theory is kind of broad. My theory works best for students who are visual and auditory learners and not all students are visual and auditory so it, I don't really include anything for kinesthetic learners. I hope you enjoyed my information processing theory and that you think it's just as great as I do. Thank you.